Okay. Looks like we got everything ready. Okay. It's a lovely day outside. It was raining, but it was actually good kind of rain, though. And her Jose Blanco, Blade Charge, and Brandon Cuevas. Great to see you. Great to have you, nonetheless. Just get my pop-out chat and just leave one window open, and I think that should do it. Um, okay. There we go. I'm out of, I'm out of what, memes? I think, did you see memes, I think? Oh, memes, okay, cool. So, uh, just want to say hello, and also, um, good news, I did get, uh, what is it, the, what was it called again? The, uh, the new game, uh, 2K19, but of course, I have to take time to create all the wrestlers, see who I have to keep, you know, things like that, but as we get closer to that, as well as WrestleMania, uh, no, this is not 2K19, this is still 2K18, um, I still gotta make all the characters feck, I mean, you, you do realize that, but, uh, so basically, the road to WrestleMania will serve as the prelude to 2K19. Well, what is it, Jose? So. Yeah, I got the Deluxe Edition uh, that I got. It it's best you get that. All right, and oh, Lucas also got. Well, of course, I did see you make your own character. Uh, it was pretty awesome, and be super. <laughs> Happy birthday. Well, anyway. Oh yeah, Lucas has his uh, has his show uh, on his own channel. So you can always check that out. But, well, I'm happy that you guys are ready for this show. Because we have a super loaded show. Uh, so much to do and not a lot of time to do it. So with that said, let's get the show started. Now, it's called the Digital Wrestling Syndicate. And here we go. All right, so it's time to go through the wavelengths to the Henry Jacobson Forum, uh, named after my fictional father, not my real dad. But pretty soon you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I got to tell you, I'm so excited because uh, I have not one, not two, but three super shows, but it's based on WrestleMania. So the next show that we'll be doing will be WrestleMania, and we're going back to 1987's WrestleMania 3 as uh, we feature the superstars of that time frame, the 70s and the 80s. And uh, But before we get to that, let's get to this show. It's a packed house here. This time as we are live in the Can in Kansas City, Kansas. Pretty big crowd uh, on this side of Kansas City in Kansas. So with that said, let's go to our first match. Now our first match was set up based on the events of what happened in the show entitled Pick on Somebody Your Own Size. Uh, that was the name of the show. Uh, that was the name of one of the shows that I had in the past. Well, we have the cruiserweight champion in this case, Neville, taking on the former champion and the two top contenders, Noam Dar and this guy, 
Ziggy Stardust, the Thin White Duke, whatever you want to call him, he is known as simply, or Mr. Space Oddity as himself as well, David Bowie. So yes, David Bowie's kind of the oddball in this whole thing. Yes, no, no, uh, puns intended. Y you got that right, Jose. So we have, uh, uh, you have Neville, you have Hideo, and Dar, uh, Noam Dar, and David Bowie. So who do you guys think will win? See. You're gonna say Tazawa? Awesome. Wait, Tazawa. All right. Well, before we go any further, our first participant. Is none other than Space Mr. Space Oddity. The Thin White Duke, and of course, Ziggy Stardust, David Bowie. So there you see David Bowie in his uh, Ziggy Stardust gimmick. Now, never mind. <laughs> no, that was uh, Hideo. That's not Tozawa. Uh, you, you mistaked uh, Tozawa for... You mistaked Hideo for Tozawa. Follow me, Bowie. <laughs> you, you just saw it, yeah? No, no, it's that's an easy mistake to make. Of course, other matches will include the insane one defending the championship, the United States Championship, against Brandon Cuevas, not in a bonus match, but on the actual show. And then in one of the bonus matches, you will see Sonic Crafter King defend the internet championship against the Big Show. However, if, if Big Show wins, he wins that championship. But if Sonic wins, due to his status as one half of the World Tag Team Champions, he may very well be the next in line to the WWE Champion. But there's other matches to determine that. But Sonic could very well be the next WWE Champion. But it all takes one step at a time. If it even happens. But then, up next is Hideo Itami, who is one of the premier challengers in 205 Live. Uh, on WWE. I gotta say, 205 Live, especially with uh, Triple H at the helm, they've definitely revitalized this man's career. Where's your axe, Bowie? Well, unfortunately, he cannot use an axe. I'm split between Itami and Novell. Oh, not a not a problem though. They have two or five live now. Well, of course they've had it as a show in in the games. Um, and of course Lucas is still getting new talent for his show. And Noam Dar. Up next, David Bowie. David Bowie equals Kratos from God of War. I mean, there's the original Kratos, which was uh, of Greek mythology, 
And then there was uh, Kratos in the current game of Norse mythology. Like, what's your favorite version of uh, Kratos, um, Sonic? Uh, you might have to... I don't think... No, Sonic doesn't even have the game. Maybe, maybe he might get it someday, but... Let's see. It's for 2K19, right, Lucas? Yeah. Uh-oh. And last but not least, the cruiserweight champion, Neville. The self-proclaimed king of the cruiserweights, and why not? He is the champion, so he has every right to claim that. What do you mean it's true? So, all right. So, so what is it? Uh, seriously, though, what is it? I. I hope it's not too nothing too bad, though. Well, uh, Brandon, I don't know if you know, but uh, of course, going from 2K18 to go 2K19, it's kind of, unless you know what moves to look for, then you might have to start from scratch again, I guess. Maybe. Oh, in school, a classmate of mine ca called me Kratos Boy. Well, I don't know if that's supposed to be an insult, but I'd, I I actually would take that as a compliment. Sometimes you just have to... Uh, it depends on the insult, but if it's even an insult at all. Match underway, though. And, of course, the rules are simple. Falls count anywhere. No disqualifications, no countouts, and the last man remaining is the winner. Or, actually, I forgot the rules, actually, now that I think about it. Let me look at the rules for it, really quickly. Yeah, yeah, I was right. Okay, there we go. Never mind. And he calls it, oh, oh, so it's, it's kind of an insult. All right. Well... I say just look at it as, I don't know, I think the best way to get people to stop calling your name is, is to accept it, I guess. I don't know, it depends, you know. I mean, there's some insults that you wouldn't let slide, but for something like that, it would probably be something that, hey, maybe that's what I am, I don't know. In, in other words, Treat it as a endearment, a term of endearment, rather than look at look at it as an insult. You know, I, I guess that's really the best way I can put it. And so far, no one has been eliminated yet. But Bowie, nice drop kick onto uh, Noam Dar. Still, I cannot wait to see that big match with uh, Sonic and. As well as one with Brandon. And I don't know if uh, Feck is still here. But yes. But yeah, just look at it as a term of endearment, really. You know. You know, if he sees that you like it, then he might not... Then he might stop calling you that. Something like that. It's just... It, it, it was something that I had to learn when I was your age, really. Alright, so on the outside, you have Itami and the champion, Neville. Inside, you have Ideo and David Bowie. Nice Hurricane Rana, and well, out goes, uh, oh no wait, that's uh, Noam Dar, never mind.
And now Bowie going after Itami and Dar going after Neville. As for what I think, I have not uh, actually started playing the game yet. Again, I want to finish off uh, the road to WrestleMania before transitioning over to 2K19. Wow! A powerbomb onto Noam Dar up against the railing. My God. That man's got to be broken in half. And then, uh oh, a double team. And a double team kick onto the head of David Bowie. But then a crucifix pin. One. Nope. Not quite. Kevin Owens. A series of knees right to the thigh of David Bowie. Oh, and a neckbreaker onto the uh, onto the runway. There's not a lot of padding there. Oh, and wow, what a clothesline onto Itami. And now Dar going for a, a leg lock onto Itami. And Atami has submitted, and Atami is gone. A shoulder tackle, and then a series of punches right to the champion Neville by David Bowie. Oh, nice Inziguri. And is that enough to knock him out? One, two, and it was. Well, the champion is gone, and now we're down to Dar and David Bowie. Could David Bowie win this? Could he become the cruiserweight champion? And, oh, nice reverse DDT onto Bowie. And a series of kicks right to the face of Bowie. And now thrown back in the ring. Probably the safest place in this whole thing. All right, now goes for the cover. Now, wait a minute. His feet on the ropes. One. Nope. Kicked out anyway. Ooh, nice reversal. And Bowie, what's he doing? Oh. oh, wow. That spinning cutter. And wait a minute, what's he doing? Oh, nice diving leg drop. And he goes for the cover. One, two, three. And Bowie has done it. David Bowie has won. I cannot believe this. I mean, it went to the outside early in the match. It was just beyond brutal. I mean, there are some of the... Well, there's that inverted uh, Hurricane Rana onto Bowie early on. Not a, pro not a problem, Lucas. And welcome back, Blade Charge. Eventually, it got down to Noam Dar... And David Bowie. But when it was all said and done, the winner of the match and new cruiserweight champion, David Bowie. So Bowie is the new champion. Wow, big win for David Bowie. All right, let's go to our next match. And up next is 
a personal vendetta between Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. And uh, these two have had a number of battles with one another. And it goes back to even my old series, back even back to when uh, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton were part of that uh, feud with the Authority. So that's how far back this, this whole thing goes. It goes back to that Authority feud that Bryan had with them. And when Randy was part of that faction. But they have still yet to settle any differences. Now when you factor the that now when you take into consideration that Daniel Bryan is now the WWE champion, that just adds more fuel to the fire. Well let's find out who can put up and who can shut up. And up first is the yes man himself. Daniel Bryan, the WWE Champion. In fact, Daniel Bryan put on the performance of a lifetime when he started the Elimination Chamber as one of the first two entrants and would eliminate every single opponent one by one, all using the same move, the yes log. In fact, it got down to him and Feck, who drew the best number you could draw as the sixth and final entrant. And it still was not enough to beat Daniel Bryan that night. So Daniel Bryan is the WWE Champion coming into this match. So who do you guys think will win? Bryan or Randy Orton? Speaking of, speaking of Orton, there he is. <sighs> Brian? Okay, cool. All right, well, welcome back, Lucas. As you are in time to see Randy Orton taking on Daniel Bryan. Now, Bryan, Daniel Bryan is the WWE Champion, but the title is not on the line, but I would have to think a victory for Orton would put him in contention for the championship. Match underway. Nice fall away slam onto Brian. A knee right to the gut. Nice snap suplex. Then a knee right to the to the back, the low back of Orton. Of course these two know each other very well. I mean, I, I don't have to stress what each of these men have to do. They know what they must do. So I'm not so I'm not worried about them. These guys have done it all. I mean, Randy Orton has has done it all, and Daniel Bryan, in spite of everything that he had to go through, he too has done it all. Nice uh, chop breaker there. That a reverse DDT. Then an elbow to the top of the head of Brian. And then a knee right to the back, much like uh, Daniel did to him earlier. Oh, 
Oh, nice backbreaker onto Orton. And, ooh, nice half Nelson suplex. And Brian looked like he was going to go for those kicks. But a T-bone suplex to Daniel Bryan. Oh, nice reverse DDT onto Brian. Did a, a knee right to the gut. And hello, KJ. What's up? And uh oh, Daniel Bryan. This is not where you want to be when you're up against Daniel Bryan. Oh, what a kick! On to, on to Randy Orton. And uh oh, Randy Orton in deep trouble here. Oh, went for the flying goat, but he didn't quite get it. And oh, went for an RKO, but well, too busy taunting was uh, Daniel Bryan, but Daniel came back. But Daniel going up to the top. Goes for... Oh, the, the flying goat. That's what that was. Sorry. Nice takedown. On to Brian. Clothesline. Another one. Ducks one. And a power slam, and just like that, Randy Orton is back in. I'm doing fine. I'm I'm doing pretty well. I'm it, I, I'm just happy to be back. And wait, wait a minute. Now going for the yes lock, and yep, th that's the one move that you had to avoid at all costs was the yes lock, and much like he did to the five opponents that he took out. In the elimination t chamber, he did the same thing to Orton. Got him to tap out to the yes lock. What's up, uh, P1 Ryan? I, great to see you, my friend. Just going to write down for my records. So, believe it or not, that was uh, Brian and Orton's first match against one another. And Brian takes a one nothing series lead over... Randy Orton in a best of five series. Yeah, that's true, KJ. Uh, excuse me. But there you see him, Daniel Bryan, showing us why he is the WWE champion and why Randy Orton does not deserve to be the champion, at least not at this particular time. Um, hey, I'm doing pretty good Ryan great to see you, my friend well that was a two and a half uh, star match which I mean a good match but it was just not great but nonetheless though let's go on to our next match but yeah big win for Daniel Bryan going forward but now we have a return match with, on the left, Luigi and Bowser, collectively known as the Dangerous Alliance, against Logan and Jake, the Paul Brothers. So you guys can tell me who do you think will win this match. Oh, that's interesting. You're going for Jake and Logan to win. Most people go against that, but hey, it's it's your opinion.
but yeah, they had a match against one another. Did the the Paul brothers and the now known Dangerous Alliance? Hate Team Ten. Well, so yeah, this whole thing started when they had a match with each other, and <laughs> okay, well, anyway, well, let's find out. <laughs> what happens as we begin the first of a best of five series with the Dangerous Alliance and the Paul Brothers. And up first is the Dangerous Alliance. And there you see them. They just came out of hell. And Bowser's leading the way. The Dangerous Alliance. I mean, you have the strength and power of Bowser, which is bad enough. But then when you have the speed and cunning that Luigi has, you have a team to be reckoned with. Making a new tag team in 2K19, awesome. Yeah, I did. I still have a lot of other people to make, so that's why I haven't gotten back to that game yet. But I, I did make you. I still have to make everybody else. And up next are the Paul brothers. Jake and Logan. And I mean, what a win this would be for, for Jake and for Logan if they somehow can pull an upset against the Dangerous Alliance. And if I'm not mistaken, after this match, we will have Brandon Cuevas get his shot, get his opportunity at the United States Championship. And we're going to start off with Logan and Bowser. Oh, and a punch right to the stomach. And then, wow, Bowser just bit him, man. And then, ooh, back body dropped onto uh, Bowser. And then Bowser just got sent onto the outside right in front of Jake. And now they could double team him now. Jake getting a hold of Bowser. Oh, but Bowser fighting back, though. But then sent into the barricade. Oh, back first into the barricade. Oh, nice uh, clothesline to take down Bowser. Although both men are risking a count out. But it looks like both of them will make it. Now Logan going to the second rope. Oh, but Luigi made sure that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Although, attack right to Jake Paul. And now Jake gonna go to the sec or to the top rib actually. Oh, nice frog splash on the Bowser. That's probably the most effective thing that you can do against a, a brute like Bowser. You have to well once you get him down, you have to keep him down. Oh, nice headbutt right to Bowser. Oh, nice counter by Jake Paul. And a nice Russian leg sweep. Yeah. 
a double axe handle to the back and another one and so far Bowser has not looked pretty Bowser hasn't looked himself well okay well now he takes down uh, Logan but Jake comes right back and then a jawbreaker to the big man and then a quick tag to Luigi let's see if he can do something about it a forearm a clothesline picks up uh, Jake belly to belly and now Luigi gonna go up to the second rope but he missed nice scoop slam on to Jake Paul now whipped into a neutral corner and Luigi set up is setting up for something what is it uh oh going to the top rope for a suplex one two nope not quite well just like that Luigi has single-handedly turned this match over but I might have spoken too soon though nice counter by uh, Luigi and Luigi what's he doing here inverted suplex and that's usually the setup to his uh, big move but he's gonna go over to Bowser and wait what's 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 Luigi doing and now wait no 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 oh my god Jake Paul got suplexed from off the top rope onto the floor and he might be broken in half although how do you get up from that and then sent into the uh, into the aisle way was Luigi but what whoa wait wait a minute wait a minute what the hell wow did, did you guys see that 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 Luigi just phased right through the the ramp and now he disappeared look at this although he goes back in the ring only to break up the count and restart it again all right well Luigi got gets back up though oh what a German suplex to Luigi though and Luigi just getting destroyed at the hands of Jake Paul I mean what whenever did you think I'd ever say that and now sent right back in the ring went I'll tell you one thing what a match this has turned into and the Paul slam the Paul slam and a pinfall one two no I'll tell you one thing the the Paul brothers are doing much better than they did the first time I mean that's saying something there you may not like these guys you may hate them but these guys are earning some respect here and now look at this Jake Paul just stopping a mud hole in him and now Logan doing the same thing just going back and forth here and a baseball slide and a pinfall wait nope broken up by Bowser immediately except Bowser got thrown out I mean folks I'm in disbelief and I'm pretty sure you guys are too I have to think oh 
Oh, yes, I may as well recognize Speranza as one-fourth of the Four Queens champions. Uh, I should mention that. And also, if I hadn't said hello to you, Speranza, I'm sorry about that. But it's great to see you, my dear. Looking beautiful tonight as always, Speranza. And then, wait a minute. Oh, nice counter by uh, Logan. A swing face buster onto Luigi. Then an elbow drop. Oh, then a chop across the chest. I mean, I gotta, I gotta tip my hat up to uh, the Paul brothers. They're putting on the match of a lifetime here. And now, wait a minute, what's, what's Logan doing? Oh, and a double knee right to the gut of Luigi. That could do it. That very well could do it. Oh, not even a one count as Bowser... Whoa, what a German suplex to Bowser, though. That'll take him out. But yes, great to have you, Speranza, my dear. Nice counter by uh, Luigi. Although now Luigi has been in there for quite a while and would it would be at his benefit to tag out. But in the meantime, he's got to survive until Bowser can get up. Or try to get the win right now. One. Two. Nope. Just a one count. Aww. She's getting worked on. Well, oh, nice uh, tag to uh, Jake Paul and then a tag right to Bowser. Trying to knock down Bowser, but oh, nice counter by Luigi, though. But yes, she loves me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just kidding. I love, you know, Speranza's a good girl. I, I love her. But yes. Oh, and a knee right to the thigh, and especially the fact that Bowser's knees are so big. I mean, they're like the size of probably Arnold Schwarzenegger's arm back in his prime. Maybe, I don't know. Nice uh, jawbreaker to Bowser again. And then he dabs. Clothesline. Another one. Ducks one. And wow, what strength to do that. A tilt-a-whirl backbreaker. And a Paul slam, this time to Bowser. And then a knee right to the sternum of Bowser. Wow, I'll tell you one thing. Bowser has just not looked really good this match. And the Paul brothers are a fine-oiled machine. I mean, after all, they are brothers. Although Bowser just picking him up like he's nothing. And then it just drops him. Oof. Uh-oh, now Jake is in trouble. Now tags in Luigi. Uh oh, going for the the dangerous power bomb. One, two, no, not quite. Well, out goes Logan. Well, now Jake is the one in trouble. I I thought he was dead, but but he still has. But he's still in there. Not sure why Luigi just left only to get back in. Then a kick to the back. 
Yeah, it was a two. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked, to be honest with you. And, oh, and a gut buster right to Luigi. And, wow, just chopped him onto the sternum. Now goes up to the second rope. Oh, nice double axe handle. Um, you're, you're what? Nice Paul slam this time to Luigi. But Luigi gets up though. And clotheslined on the top rope. I'll tell you one thing, this match has turned into a great match, I gotta tell you. Because I honestly thought that the Paul brothers shocketh. Oh, sorry. But I honestly thought the Paul brothers would get destroyed very easily, but I'm, I was mistaken. One, two, no. But then sent right back into the corner. But then a backbreaker to Luigi. Shook it. Oh, okay. Nice Russian leg sweep. Jake Paul doesn't have a heart. Time to use my Keyblade. Well, we'll see about that. Uh-oh. Well, Jake... Looks like he's going to get a mud hole stomped in his butt by both Luigi and Bowser. I mean, Bowser has big feet. Although Luigi does stomp like a stallion. And, whoa, a baseball slide by Bowser. That, t that tells you how bad he, badly he wants to win. Now goes for the cover. One, two... Well, I mean, oh, surprised it didn't show up on the screen, but um, that's not always the case. I, I can always be in a bad mood, and I try to, you know, whenever I try to get on doing my shows or uploading something, I usually, I, I try to get into a good mood before uh, streaming. If I'm not in a good mood, I'm probably not going to stream. It's just that simple. Now picked up by Bowser, and Bowser, whoa, what a clothesline, and from Bowser nonetheless. I mean, I, I try to stay in a good mood, that's all I can tell you, tell you. And now, just crushing him with his feet is Jake Paul, and if the feet didn't get him, the smell will. One, two, but Jake Paul still kicks out. What the hell does it take to beat Jake Paul? But Jake fighting back. Whoa, what a close line to Bowser. Why won't he die? I don't know. And a, another Paul slam to Bowser. I'll tell you one thing. This match has more than exceeded my expectations. It's been the match of the night so far and we still have one match after this and then we get to our bonus matches with uh, Sonic Crafter King and, 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 and friends and now wait a minute what a, a rock bottom don't tell me that's enough one two no that was it it's like Ever since, like, like, when has that become a thing? I'm actually, no, no, let me take that back. That's become a huge thing in, uh, recently, and it's like, it's exploded. But Bowser. Uh-oh. What's, what's Bowser doing? Turns him over and, whoa, what a... Well, not only does he turn him over and slam him, he goes and finishes him with a punch. 
but then gets sent over, and wow, nice counter by Bowser. What agility from the big man. And now, wait, Bowser. Oh, a headbutt right to the back. And is that enough? One, two, no. Oh, nice counter onto Bowser. And Bowser just picking him up and choke slamming him with two hands. And, and and Logan is just looking limp. One, two, no. And then Luigi turns his attention to Jake Paul and then got snake eyes or or head dropped onto the top turnbuckle. But that might have helped uh, Logan get back on his feet. And another Paul slam. And, well, oh, Logan doing this. Like, I was about to say, Logan's making a mistake. He should be going after Luigi and not pandering to the crowd. I know he keeps kicking out. I don't know why, but he does. Wow, what a suplex. Goes right into the corner. And now, uh-oh. Uh-oh, they're going to set for the Hype Rider. The Hype Rider. One, two. You have got to be kidding me. The Hype Rider puts out Luigi and the winners of the match. And I can't believe I'm saying this. Are the Paul brothers. Wow. How they were able to beat the best team in the world, I'll never understand. But it just goes to show that blood is thicker than water. But this match was a four and a half star match. I mean, this has to boost the Paul brothers closer and closer to the tag team championships. But that was an instant classic. I'm sorry. I mean, how do you follow that up? Oh, wait, you do with this match. The insane one, the United States champion against Brandon Cuevas. Now, the insane one won the championship after he originally lost it to the then WWE champion. And then when the title was held up, Brandon Cuevas won a Royal Rumble. And the man that he eliminated last to win that title at the time was the insane one. The insane one eventually would regain the United States champion and Brandon Guevas won a number one contender match to get this opportunity and that's how we got here. So for Brandon Guevas, last time he eliminated him from the Royal Rumble, but this time he's got to beat the insane one, Mano y Mano. Will Brandon become a two-time United States champion? Or will the insane one find a way past him on the road to WrestleMania? Man, I got to tell you, that, that tag team match was, you know... The result aside, it was a classic. But up first, a man 
who is from your darkest fears. He weighs 275 pounds. Or, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 285 pounds. Sorry. He comes from your darkest fears. He stands at six foot nine. The challenger. An ex United States champion. The man. Brandon Cuevas. Well, well, Sonic, I guess you, you might have to use your Keyblade or that Scythe that you have in one of your pictures. Oh, you do weigh 275 pounds. I, I keep forgetting because, you know, sometimes you, you weigh less than that. Sometimes you weigh more than that. But, I, okay, 275 pounds it is. Which is kind of weird because, you know, back in uh, the days of the Attitude Era... When, when The Rock was the man, I mean, he, he was estimated to weigh 275 pounds himself, but, you know, that was back when they inflated weight. In real life, he probably might have been a good 245 at best. But now he takes the mask off. I mean, honestly, this guy doesn't need a mask. He looks pretty good. What are you talking about? But there he is, coming from the crowd. As if, he, as if he's Seth Rollins or somebody like that. There he is, the insane one. The United States champion. To describe the insane one would be a cross between a Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. I mean, I mean his body is much like Seth, but his attitude is more like uh, Dean Ambrose. And that's what it's all about, the United States champion, Chip. And wow, look at look how tense he is. Is Brandon Cuevas. Look at his look at his arms. He's just shaking. And there you see him, calm, cool and collected. And he's going to need to be. Though it may just be the calm before the storm. The United States champion. The insane one. I mean, you could cut the tension with a knife. And the fact was, when Brandon was the champion, insane one made it a point to go after him. He's all bite and no bark. He's always been like that. Oh, really? Because, you know, Brandon, I mean, he was talking to Feck one day, and, you know, he and Feck, they would always get into fights uh, verbally on other people's streams, and I figured, hey, let's, let's see if we can settle this once and for all, and Brandon settled it, if you remember. But now he's going up against a completely different person and insane one. The insane one, now the leader of the asylum. However, the asylum, the rest of the asylum, have been barred at ringside. He's all action and no chat. That. Well, what, wait, what was cool? Well, out goes uh, Insane One. And this match... Wait, wait, what kind of match was this? 
sorry, sorry, sorry for uh, oh, extreme rules. Okay, never mind. I forgot. It's extreme rules. However, it is not false count anywhere. You can only win inside the ring, but you can, but you are, but you can and are encouraged to use weapons. Whoa! What a suplex! And his legs hit the hit the steps there. Well, I have the game. I just don't have it. Uh, I don't have all the characters yet, and I have to go through the the trouble of making them all, especially the ones that are more or less exclusive. Whoa! What a, a insane drop kick. That's what I'll call it. The insane drop kick. Oh yeah, well that's because he's insane, of course. He does insane moves. And a rake in the eyes right to Brandon Cuevas, but it's perfectly legal in a no disqualification match where it's extreme rules. And, and it had to be this way because I wanted there to be a winner. There has to be a winner. And now Brandon going underneath the ring and what's he got? Oh my god, he's going for the ladder. 20 pounds of steel, but then it gets taken away from him. Oh, and insane one being the smaller of the two men uses it as a weapon, but that's what you're supposed to do in an Extreme Rules match. Oh, but Brandon fighting back though. Nice short clothesline. Set into the into the corner. Then a couple of shoulder tackles. On oh, a running knee right to the head. And that could do it. One. Two. Nope. Just a one count. Then a kick to the back. Nice reverse DDT. Close line. Another one. And then a drop kick. Especially from the big man. Oh, nice super kick. But then countered by the insane one. I mean, these guys know that one misstep and it could be all over all oh, the ripcord knee and that could knock him out or so we thought and now Brandon going back underneath the ring and he's got a kendo stick a big man going for a light weapon but that could do a lot of damage from whoever uses it and he gets it on the back one course has to realize that the insane one's just not going to give it up like that. <sighs> nice reverse DDT. And wait a minute. The insane stop. And Brandon has been busted open. A series of forearms, ducks a clothesline, and then a back kick. Oh, now insane one. He's got this one, but can he finish the job? That's the question. A jawbreaker down goes the big man. And out of the ring he goes. You can't get pinned or forced to submit on the outside, though. And Brandon picks up Insane One and oh, just slams him belly first on top of the apron, which is the hardest part of the ring. And now he's going to get that ladder again. And now he has that ladder again. And he hits him this time. And then once again to the arm. 
then right to the sternum. And, well, okay, well, you missed that time. Oh, right to the back. But as you can see, Brandon is wearing a crimson mask. And wait a minute. Oh, was going to go for the deep slumber, but countered. And now, wait a minute. Oh my god, the insane stop right on the ladder. That could knock him out for good. One, two, no! How the hell did he kick out of that? A lesser man would have kicked, would have stayed down after one, but two insane stomps and the second one on a ladder. What the hell does it take to beat Brandon? Uh, ref, one, two, no. You know, I, I think uh, this might actually empower Brandon. Oh, but then a ripcord knee. This again. An insane one celebrating. And instead of going for the cover, oh, went for a, a code breaker. Oh, but he's not done with him yet. Goes off the ropes again. And another insane stomp. I mean, how many more how much more than can Brandon take? One, two. It took not one, not two, not two but three insane stomps one of which was on the ladder and the insane one has done it yes your brother is no ordinary person and whoa Brandon didn't want that I guess he must have thought that insane one was just being disingenuous I don't know But here's a match that was on par with that tag team match that happened. Uh, you know, all, all, you know, joking aside, I mean, Brandon did everything he could to win. But Insane One just proved why he is the United States champion and why he never really I mean really the only person that ever beat him for that title was the previous WWE champion and Mary C. Sanity I don't think I've ever seen you before but great to see you nonetheless I can tell you one thing you may be right about that Jose you may be right about that but we're going to close out the uh, the 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 regular show before we get to our bonus matches with a promo and I understand the Miz is going to talk of course I'm not sure what it is that the Miz has to say but for Brandon he has nothing to be ashamed of nothing at all and I'm not just talking about him as a competitor I'm just talking about him as a man But let's find out what The Miz has to say. But otherwise, great to see you, Mary C. And... Well, not a problem, Gunshot. The most must-see superstar in history. Thing about me is I go out to that ring and I know that the only thing that's going to keep me moving forward is hard work. Oh yeah, he's one to talk about hard work. Marise. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Only some of us listen to it, and that's on one. Well, I'm someone that's always followed that rule, except for lately. You know, I thought a certain someone was my friend, but I'm starting to realize he was actually my enemy. So he's going to invite him out here tonight. So let's be a man about this, Dolph Ziggler. Come out here right now so we can settle this in front of the WWE Universe. 
Ooh, he's calling out uh, Dolph Ziggler. And so basically he called out Dolph Ziggler. All right, well, let's see what Ziggler has to say about this. You can boo me all you want. I don't really care. I don't care what the universe thinks. And I certainly don't care what you think. None of this really matters to me. Oh, really? Are you kidding me? I'm out here speaking my mind. Uh-oh. I'm the most awesome force in the WWE and there's no one that can stop me. Those are pretty, some pretty strong words. I suggest you think long and hard about the next ones that come out of your mouth. I would hate for you to say something that you aren't going to be able to back up. If I wanted to waste more time here in some horse crap, I'd stay in this city for an extra week. Wow. We can talk in circles all night. I'm sure you'd prefer that. Me, I don't like to talk. So why don't you give old Papa what he wants and we'll waltz. But I don't fight just because they tell me to. And I certainly don't fight because you tell me to. Oh! Well, it looks like chaos is indeed going to ensue. And of course, these two have been at each other's throats since, well, since, well, since my old series, really. Now going to pick him up. Now what's he going to do? Oh, and he misses that elbow drop. Miz could ensue. And no, he's not Peggy Sue. He got assaulted. I mean, this is just a war right here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, they actually had the same idea. But eventually the referee finally gets in and stops The Miz before doing anything. But The Miz, I think he might have made his point. Damn cheap shot from The Miz. Well, well, it turned out for the best though. But that was, that was a war. All right, well, let's go to our next show. And... Well, I was hoping that my good, our good friend Melissa, I don't know if she's uh, back. I'm going to check on, let's see, what's this? <laughs> okay, just looking at the, at my Discord, but anyway... I may as well show you the calendar of what's up. At the top right corner, 
we're going back to 1987, kind of like Back to the Future, in a sense, with the superstars of the 1970s and the 1980s. And uh, one of those matches uh, that I will confirm is, or two of them actually, first is Bob Barker against Mr. Rogers, and the other is Typhoon of the Natural Disasters against the champion Bruno San Martino for the NWA title. Uh, that's the big. Those are the two ones of, of those that we have. There's other matches, but we'll get to those when we get to it. So, uh, I don't think we've ever met Maurice. But otherwise, great to see you. But, yeah, I, I was hoping that our good friend Melissa was here. Because I could show her this. And this is a person that she always wanted me to... Marisa. Is it Marisa uh, or Maurice A? Because I always forget. But it's I have to think it's Marisa. So, but hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But yeah, here's a here is a matchup that my good friend Melissa has always wanted to do. <sighs> Marisa, all right, cool, cool. If I'm wrong, like I said, correct me. Well, there's my character, and the person that she wanted to to fight me of all the people. In the world, she wanted me to fight. Nope, not Brian Blair. But this guy right here. Yes. You are reading that right. And, and he's a hundred? What the hell? Of course, I forgot to uh, fix the stats there, but... Wow. Wow. I have to fight Barney. Thankfully, though, it's just a one-off match, but I wanted to, you know, get that match out there. Uh, we'll, we'll actually, we'll use that arena. Why not? Okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I I really hope the 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 chat fits ex fi fixes itself. It's like, oh shit! It's to Jew versus Barney. Yes, you came in just in time. But yes, you are looking at that right. Me against <sighs> Barney of all people. Now, Melissa, I'm just going to say that this is just a one-off match. So, this is the only time you're ever going to get to see Barney. I mean, I could have gotten Caillou. Yes, I could have gotten Caillou. But Barney was like my first real character that I just didn't really like. When is your match? Your match is uh, after this one, actually. So, your match is after this. Sonic. But hey, at least you don't have to fight Barney. Although if people start watching this just because of Barney, I I might do that. But it, otherwise, it's just a one-off. We'll get to it. And we're going to go to Alaska for this one in Anchorage. And there you see me. But yeah, uh, your your match is after uh, this one, Sonic. So it's not that far off. Wow. There you see me, but it, it, it has to be the oddest match ever. 
Blue, to Blue Toad for the win, of course. Well, wish me all the luck because I'm going up against Bowser, at, or not Bowser, excuse me, Barney. And hello, Izzy Rose. And wait, what's Barney doing? What the heck? Wow. Barney just did the dab? Wow. What the hell? Bar look, look at Barney. Look at this. Dank Barney. What the hell? I mean, Barney's just... Uh, <laughs> this is just insane, man. I mean, sometimes I have to wonder if I'm even on drugs or something. What the hell? Whoa. Hey, don't you dare bite at me, Barney. Or I'll break that face of yours. Okay, to be honest, I don't want to see this. <laughs> And now he's wow! Now he's doing some disco. What the hell? <laughs> oh, now now he's shaking his butt. What the hell? All right. Well, I guess it's time for me to put this uh, Barney down. And like I said, this is a one-off, so this is the only time you get to see Barney. You're, you're, oh, you're, you came from Lucas's streams. Awesome. Well, nice to meet you. Otherwise, whoa, what a Dragon Ball Z punch? Or actually, I think it was a Dragon Ball punch because Dragon Ball did come out before Z. And wow, Barney is using the weapons. But you know what? Get that out of here. And what? Look at... Wow! A backflip from Barney? I'm gonna put Barney in Jurassic Park. What? What? Look at this. Barney is just making an absolute idiot out of me right now. But you know what? I would much rather him making me an idiot instead of him making anybody else an idiot. I can tell you that much. And then, what? Barney just, how is he doing this? Oh my God. Don't tell me I'm already gonna tap out here. Hey, get get the hell off me. I swear this Barney is just making an absolute idiot out of me. Well, I mean, Barney is set at 100 overall, so he probably would win. Because I forgot to, you know, depower him. I mean, so if I win, it would be more incredible. And then, look at this. He's just shaking his ass, and then... Oh, neckbreaker. Wow, what a jumping elbow drop. Whoa! A suplex turned into a power bomb. That's just incredible power. And what? He just ran and used his ass. What the hell? Wow, Barney's ass got him the victory. What the hell? This is insane, man. What the hell? Well, I'm afraid you got it over with. But, but my goodness, Barney used his ass and beat me. All right, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, just ran up 
and he just used his ass. Well, to be fair, Sonic, he was set at 100 overall, so that's the only reason he beat me. <laughs> hey, don't use the Lord's name in vain. No, just kidding. But, but really, don't do that. And then, look at that. Now, look at that. The cameraman's scared of him. Look at this. Cameraman is scared of Barney. I mean, did Barney get stiff all of a sudden? Kind of, that was weird. But yeah, if you want to see a rematch with Barney, except, uh, you know, not set at 100, uh, just tell me. And if not, I'll get rid of him. So yeah, just tell me if you want to see him again. And if you do, I'll make sure he's powered down. Uh, uh, otherwise, I'll just get rid of him. But... Wow, that was just all I will say that. So Ryan says rematch. Jose says no. And then let me get the, um, oh yeah, the ladder match, which is the next match will feature Sonic. Are you still here? No. And then Marisa says no. But, okay, so we have, yes, oh, 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 you're still here, okay, never mind, I thought you were answering, Izzy says yes to a rematch, can't believe Barney did the dab, that's just weird, alright, so let's get on with our title match, well, first let's get the challenger, and that man is the big show and he will go up against Sonic Crafter King or Sonic uh, not just as so basically Sonic doubles as not his not just his own character but also as Sonic Crafter King's character so that's easy in that sense also let me uh, change the Well, let's go to Sonic's own uh, arena for this one. So let me make sure that the okay it looks good, good. All right, cool. So well, it could have been Big Show, but then again, if that was Big Show, he would have been tired. Anyway, but then again, how could Big Show do a dab, or or rather not a dab, but rather do the split? Because I've never seen a big man do that, never. M maybe in his younger years, maybe, but not like recently. Okay, so here's what's at stake. For the Big Show, it's the internet championship that Sonic holds. However, Sonic is also one half of the tag team champions of the world. And if Sonic wins, not only does he get to keep the Internet Championship, but he will get his opportunity at the U at not the United States, excuse me, at the WWE champion, Daniel Bryan. But that's a huge if against the Big Show. But of course, a ladder match would favor the small men as opposed to the big men given the laws of gravity so for Sonic this is his chance to possibly position himself to the main event at Wrestlemania as the WWE champion or at the very least he'll just lose the internet championship we'll see And this time we are live in Colorado Springs, Colorado for this one. And it looks like Brandon is still pissed off at the fact that he let a golden opportunity slip through his fingers. 
I wouldn't want to be anybody that gets in his way. But up next is the big show. I mean, he stands at close to seven feet tall. Maybe he is seven feet tall, but I remember in his prime, he stood at seven foot two. And he weighed 500 pounds in his prime, but now he weighs about a good 421 pounds now. You know, being that he is older and he has to, you know, keep himself in good shape. Nowadays. But he's still a giant and he's still a threat. I mean, he is the, I mean, really, I mean, if you look at him, he's the epic beard man. But up next, there you see him. Sonic. And of course, he doesn't have that championship around his waist because, well, the championship is already in the ring. Oh, 393 pounds. All right, well, thank you, Brandon. See, I, I, I didn't know. But here's a man who weighs a good 175, maybe at the most. But Sonic's the name, speeds my game. And that's what he's probably going to need because Sonic cannot try to match power with the Big Show. It's just not going to work. So he's got to outrun the Big Show. He's got to get him tired and disoriented. So this match is not just for the Internet Championship that Sonic holds, but it's also for the chance of a lifetime for Sonic. Match underway. And Big Show surprisingly goes out of the ring goes outside and Sonic goes to work and he's going right whoa what a clothesline sending both himself and Big Show out of the ring and the ladder falls off and now he's going right after the legs of Big Show that's a good move to do against the Big Show uh oh but one thing you don't want to do is get caught and oh well Big Show got caught himself and again, going right after the legs. You gotta take out the Big Show's legs. That'll prevent him from climbing up the ladder. Ooh, what a drop kick. And well then then he ran into Big Show himself. That one thing you one thing that Sonic can't do is try to run into the Big Show. Because that Big Show is just gonna tear him apart. Now he picks up Sonic. Oh, no, no, backbreaker. That'll definitely take a lot of starch out of him. Oh, and then a slap across the head. As if to disrespect him. And then, wow, what a back body drop on the floor. That's the one thing you didn't want to do against Big Show is go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. But a nice drop kick, or nice, uh... Jawbreaker, then a power bomb onto Sonic. Now Sonic is getting destroyed now. Oh, then a massive headbutt. And Sonic could be finished right now. Or so I thought. You're supposed to win. I mean, let's not forget, Big Show is a former WWE slash World Wrestling Federation. Big Show Eggman. Yeah, he kind of does look like Eggman. I kind of forgot about that. Another slap across the head. Oh, nice counter by Sonic, though. And then a spinning heel kick. And already, uh, now, right now, Big Show in a bit of trouble himself. 
then rammed into the steps. Then a DDT on the, to the floor. And now Sonic going to look for some weapons. Uh oh. Oh, he's pulling out a really big ladder now. Oh, what a, a modified backbreaker. And now, wait a minute, what's, what's Sonic doing? Sonic. Whoa, what a, a what a block busting neck breaker onto the big show. Although, okay, what the hell are you doing, Sonic? Just going under the ladder constantly. What the hell are you doing, Sonic? And now, now Big Show's doing the same thing. Oh, but, wait a minute. Big Show, oh, slammed Sonic's head face first into that ladder. Although, now, Big Show just standing there like an idiot. What are you doing? Just, if you're going to do something, do it. Otherwise, get the ladder and climb up. All right. Well, now he's now he has his hands on that ladder. And it looks like Big Show's going to set up that ladder. But not before Sonic can do anything about it. But Big Show Oh, well got out of the way. I mean, this is like David versus Goliath, although David just took down Goliath with the with the DDT. He's got his hands on the ladder. Now he's going to set it up. Now he has to climb up and get that get that championship, and he's got a hold of it. And now both men are on top of the ladder. And down goes Sonic. And now Big Show has his hands on the championship. I mean, Sonic has got to get back up before Big Show can get this. Sonic finally getting up, but it could be but could it be too late though? Sonic. Just standing there. Oh, Big Show got it. Sonic got up, but Big Show managed to get the championship and get somewhat of a measure of revenge against Big Show. And for Big Show, he is now the internet champion so congratulations to uh, the big show wow how heartbreaking was that I mean that was just big show I mean he took the best that Sonic could throw at him and it, at one point, I thought Sonic had it won. I really did, but but Big Show just proved that he was just too much. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Sonic is an awesome guy. Just real awesome. But, let's see. Wait, wait, what? Wait a second. What? Okay. Well, for a moment, I thought I, I just I have word. I just received word that a fight is going on in the back. Now, Sonic, as I mentioned before, just lost a huge match against 
the Big Show and is making his way into the backstage and he is getting into a fight with with Brandon? How did that happen? So there's a fight in the back and it has to do with Sonic and Brandon. Wait, what the hell's going on here? And right? Oh, nice to meet you, Javier. But I mean Sonic, like I said, he was just I mean he he was just down on his luck and earlier before that, Brandon had lost a huge match against the insane one. And I understand that, like I said, there is a brawl in the back. And I had to, and I had a feeling that something was going to happen. Let's see what happens here. And wow, I mean, Sonic, of course, was in a foul mood, but so was. Uh, Brandon and now it looks like they're gonna go in there and kick each other's butts now Yeah, it looks like they're gonna take it out on each other now And oh hello Chris Clark. I didn't see you there until just now great to see you my friend but there you see Sonic after he had just lost his match with Brandon, who had lost his match before that. Oh, rammed into that uh, garbage thing. Well, of course, Chris. But right now, these two men are just going to fight each other at... Nice uh, back leg sweep. <laughs> I'm I'm happy you said censor censored yourself really. Oh wow. And then oh and a neck breaker. Very effective move against a big man. Oh, wow, nice elbow drop. And now Brandon just standing there looking at so <clears throat> Sonic. Excuse me, I had something in my throat. Although, I was just going to say, why, why are you just standing there? Uh-oh. I was waiting for the insane one to show up. Not you, Sonic. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, I'm afraid Sonic did show up. And wow, takedown onto Brandon. And now Sonic is on the top of that uh, crate, and then he takes down Brandon. And it, so you want to call me out again? Hmm. Oh, wow, rammed into that uh, chair that fell apart there. And now Sonic has that chair, and he hits him in the legs. Only Shadow can do a roundhouse kick. Hey, you could do something that you never thought you could. And, oh, the Salido del Sol, uh, a la uh, Callisto. Oh, just rammed into the garage door. And wait, there's Finn Balor. I just saw Finn Balor in the back. 
You know what? I think I have an opponent for you, Chris. Oh, wow. Then just rammed him. And now, wait, he has a fire extinguisher, and now he's just using it to cool off Sonic. Oh, and now he does it again. I'll tell you one thing, at the, at the rate he's going is Brandon Cuevas. He may as well eventually get his hands on Insane One. Oh, but the fire extinguisher went out. And now they're going into the inter interview area. Oh, now nice counter by uh, Sonic though. And a Hurricane Rana. Oh, rammed into the uh, into the wall. Nice back kick, or roundhouse, I should say. And a Salido del Sol, and that puts him out. Wow, Sonic, he wanted to make a statement that he was not going to let what Big Show, what just happened with him in the Big Show affect him. And unfortunately, Brandon was in the way. But I have a feeling that this thing between Brandon and Insane One, and now you throw Sonic in the mix, now you have something brewing here. But for now, Sonic Crafter King just took out the big man. Unbelievable. Well, unfortunately, Chris, uh, like I said, I'm staying true to my word that we'll have another match against each other on 2K19. But but I do have a very good opponent for you, but I'm just saying. But Sonic beats up Brandon. So now you have Insane One, Brandon, and now Sonic into this mix. And you have something brewing there. But we'll see what happens. In the meantime, let's get Chris Clark, who just got here. And one of the guys that was getting interviewed up until Sonic and Brandon were fighting, and they got and they reached the uh, the interview area. That man was Finn Balor. So let's see. Let's change it to. We'll go with this one. Why not? But for Brandon, all he has to do is just shake it off and move on and and get ready for his next match, whenever that is. But until then, we're, we are going to see a match, a first-time matchup between Finn Balor, who was in the backstage area, against Chris Clark right here, right now. Let's do it. We'll see what kind of match Finn Balor gives Chris Clark. But yeah, Sonic Crafter King, what did you what did you think of that fight, man? All right, here we go. Live in Cincinnati, Ohio. And now we have in his first match after a, a failed attempt to reclaim the, the tag team titles. Ugh, let me slow down. His first match after a failed attempt to reclaim the tag team championships. We have 
Mr. CKO himself, Chris Clark. In a first time matchup with Finn Balor. And unless someone else comes into the stream that hasn't had a match yet, uh, this might be our last, so. But otherwise, I had a lot of fun uh, with you guys as always. And I hope you guys are having fun right now. And there you see him doing the Orton pose. And up next is the head of the Balor Club, Finn Balor. And there he is. I mean, just the spectacle of Finn Balor. I remember when he was the NXT champion, he was awesome. And, and, I, and, I, and I honestly hope that he becomes universal champion again, and hopefully he doesn't get injured like he did last time. But there you see him. The Balor Club in full effect. So Chris is definitely going to have his work cut out for him. I mean, Finn is not just a Johnny come lately. I mean, the guy is, like I said, a former Universal Champion. But we'll see who comes out on top. All right, let's get to the match. Nice fall away slam onto uh, Finn Balor to start the match. Of course, next wrestling show involving 2K18 uh, will be WrestleMania 3. So again, we're going back in time. Uh, and of course, if time permits, we will do our bonus matches and we will see what happens in the saga between Brandon and Sonic as well as uh, Insane One. Ooh, nice uh, uppercut. Now, of course, this match is a normal match, so they better get back in the ring before the 10 count. Oh, and a knee right to the head of Balor. I mean, Chris is taking it out on Balor. I mean, af especially after losing the the tag team championships as well as the subsequent re rematch. Uh, yeah, he's taking it out on Finn. And he may not even need a CKO to do it. But he is going to pick him up. And, of course, this is a move that you don't see Chris do a lot because he doesn't fight a lot of... Uh... Oh, and it's a... Wow, a double count out. Wow, a double count out on Chris and Finn. He was too busy beating up Finn. He didn't realize that the 10 count had expired. And also, great to see you, Broken JT Price, even though it doesn't show up on the screen. But otherwise, great to see you, Brother JT. What's up? But yeah, Chris, like I said, was, beat was too busy beating up Finn. He didn't realize that th the 10 count had been administered and... It ends up as a draw, so we might have a rematch with those two. Maybe. But otherwise, great to see you, Brother JT. So anyway, how's it going?
Oh, you, you you do want a rematch. Well, we'll have to save that for another time. But great to see you otherwise, uh, JT Price. You're doing fine. Awesome. Well, hey, I know you could do better, but hey, you know, sometimes you just have to take it one day at a time. Um, and that that kind of goes with me, too. I have to take every day, one day at a time. That's all I can do. Uh, but you know what, Price, since you're here... Uh, your aunt is all oh, awesome. I'm happy that your aunt is doing much better, cause I I could tell that you know, when I, I I could tell that you were doing well and good, and also great to have you back, P1 Ryan. Uh, so broken, do you want a match? If you don't want to, I'm not gonna give it to you. So it, it's it's up to you, my friend. Just take a drink here. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, I was hoping at least uh, you, Retro Rick, uh, Adam Garen, uh, and or Omar Wolf is, uh, was here. Because I wanted to give you guys a match. And I'll tell you what. Oh, Lucas is live? Alright, so here's what I'll do. Since Lucas is live, I'm going to make this match the last match. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm done after this. So, we will do this. We will have our four-on-four -four match, and we will feature JT Price. Well, first, let's get the challengers. Now, the way the challengers in this particular case got a chance at this was that one of them, the, the, the captain of this match... Is Kenny Omega. He he won a fatal four-way elimination match in which he eliminated uh, two of the four Q4 champions, and he has in so it's himself, the Omega, and he has brought in the Alpha, known as Chris Jericho, as well as. The, the two ex-leaders of the Bullet Club, one of them being AJ Styles, and the other, Finn Balor, who honestly didn't really get hurt as badly as he otherwise probably would have against Chris. So if anything, that double count-out win. Well, I mean, I have Kenny Omega, and I have... Well, I have Kenny Omega, so it is possible to have the the Bullet Club, albeit in a very loose sense. So we have so those are the challengers against uh, the captain for this match, JT Price. No, I don't have Nick or Mike Matt Jackson. I should probably get them in Fire Pro though. So we have JT Price, Adam Garin. Uh, put it random, why not? The, the Royal Rumble winner uh, going into WrestleMania 2018 for 2K18, Retro Rick, and a former tag team champion. Yes, you yes you may. Yes, you may, Broken. Uh, we'll also put it on, uh, on random. Why not? Also, let me make sure that the rules are in set in place and what a better way to do this that at New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom and we'll do it at an evening why not and I would turn the entrance on but I, I actually yeah we'll, we'll, we'll do that we'll do that alright so this will be our last matchup for the Q4 titles the champions, JT Price, Adam Garin, Rick, Retro Rick, and Omar Wolf against Kenny Omega, the Alpha Chris Jericho, and two ex-leaders of the Bullet Club, AJ Styles and Finn Balor. We'll see which team reigns supreme. Let's do it. So yeah, I'll be I'll I'll definitely put you in there, Price. 
I just I think I'll have to get Rick Rude's moves because that's really what your character's based on, Rick Rude. Um, although for two K nineteen, which I do have the game, I just need to put people in there. I'm gonna put you with uh, Matt Hardy's group since you. I mean, since come on, you are broken JT Price, so I have to put you in there. So so Matt Hardy and and Bray Wyatt will definitely love to have you in the in in their group there. So yeah, who do you think will win? The champs led by JT Price or the challengers led by Kenny Omega? Of course, if you have other ideas, JT, um it's okay, you can tell me what they are. And of course we are, of course, naturally in Tokyo, Japan. And there you see Kenny Omega in all his glory. Or would you rather stick with the, the asylum as you are right now? I take it. But, I, I, but I'm just guessing though. And up next is the Alpha, Chris Jericho. I mean, what what a better partner to have than your equal, the Alpha, Chris Jericho. Oh, you want to team up with Rick? Hmm. I'll have to talk to uh, Rick about that, but, but I think it's a great idea, though. The price is Rick, you know, because you're JT Price and he's Rick. I mean, both of you, I, I don't know if you guys like uh, game shows, because I know that Rick loves his game shows, especially the Price is Right and Real, Wheel of Fortunes of the World. And But I think it's a great idea, though. Again, I'll talk to Rick about it, but I, I have a, I think it's a good idea though. I like it. Oh, you do? What, what's your favorite? Well, there you saw Chris Jericho. And then there you see Mr. Phenomenal himself, AJ Styles. They don't want none. Well, I want. Well, I wouldn't want some of uh, AJ Styles, I can tell you that much. But yeah, what is your favorite, by the way? And then, of course, you have Finn Balor, who you saw in the previous matchup, which was Wheel of Fortune. Hmm. Yes, Wheel of Fortune was a big favorite of mine. I mean, I like Jeopardy, and I like uh, The Price is Right, and Let's Make a Deal, and and then The Joker's Wild, not to be confused with uh, the Snoop Dogg version of it, but the original, uh, th that was one of my favorites, though. Another person's going live. Well, up next are the champions. There you see Mr. Price himself. as one-fourth of the Q4 champions. You know, when we get... Oh, yes, The Price is Right was also a good show. Well, when I get to 2K19, we might have to do a series of creation suites, especially those who uh, have a character that... 
like I'm, I'm pretty sure someone like Ryan might make themselves. I'm pretty sure Lucas could make himself. But then there are those who um, I created. I would have to create again for 2K19. You know, because if I wanted to get P1 Ryan for 2K19, I don't know if uh, you have the game, dude. And I'm talking to Ryan, by the way. And that's what I will do. Well, there's Adam Guerin. 20, oh, 20 made you. Hmm. You're the best of creation? What? Oh, I'm the best at creation. Okay. I wasn't sure what you meant. Like, oh, right. But there's Adam Guerin, your tag team partner. I'm so oh, you know what? I think he's watching uh, Blaze Radio as we speak. But nonetheless, Broken, I, I hope you guys, uh, by you, I mean, like, you and Rick and, and the other champs, beat the challengers and there he is there's Rick it's time to feel the bang Rick and Adam you want Rick and Adam wait, wait, wait what do you mean by that Well, it's time to feel the bang. Well, that was practically the whole point of it, Ryan. Oh, the team of Ryan and Rick? Well, you, you became a team when you became the champions. Uh, I don't know if you knew that, but... Or actually, I'm pretty... You know, wait, wait, wait. You, you were there, but... Oh, oh, you want to make a stable with Rick and Adam. I could see that happening, especially with Adam. You know, Adam is a former college uh, student. I mean, he used to wrestle amateur style. I mean, he was part of the, he, he was part of the varsity club in, in his day. I mean, he's still a relatively young man now, but I meant like when he was in college full time, he was an amateur wrestler, no doubt. And last but not least. Oh, uh, one of the ex tag team champions of the world. But still otherwise a Q4 champion. Omar Wolf. All right, well it's time. And it looks like JT and Kenny Omega are going to start off first. Of course, JT hasn't forgotten what Kenny did in their other match against one another. It it was it, it, it was every man for himself, but this time it's four on four. Nice counter by Omega. Nice inverted uh, Hurricane Rana, then a kick to the gut. Then a kick to the face. Just methodically taking down JT Price. And now going to send him over to his corner. Nice angle slam a la Kurt Angle. Forgive me if I'm not talking very much, but it's kind of early in the match. Oh, and a rake in the face right to Kenny Omega. And set into the corner and a quick tag right to Adam Guerin. And gets the foot. 
And now Adam goes off the ropes. And, oh, oh okay. Nice backside slam, amateur style. Very good takedown. Then a kick to the back. Oh, but then a rake in the eyes. Uh, now set in the wrong corner now as a, a quick tag right to AJ Styles. Well, I'm... I guess, but we'll see. I, I don't know. They would have to have a, a considerable budget to have a game up. Not saying it couldn't happen, but... Oh, nice modified side slam onto Garen. Oh, nice counter by Garen. Now he gets a hold of him and picks him up. Wow, what a... Snap. Spine buster, but instead shoved off. And now AJ Styles, what's he going to do? Goes up to the second rope. And a double axe handle and taking down Adam Guerin. And Adam trying to get to the tag, or get to his corner and tag, and a tag right to Rick. And a series of clotheslines, and down goes AJ Styles. So now we'll see what Rick can do. A punch, and a leg drop onto Styles and making sure that Styles does not tag out. And, uh oh, wait a minute. Super power bomb. Oh, but he picks him up. He's not done with him yet. Sent into the corner. And now Rick. Yep, looks like he's gonna stop a mud hole in him. And now it's Omar Wolf's turn. And now Rick is going to do it. And another quick tag. On oh, a baseball slide right to AJ Styles. And is that enough to beat him? One. Two. No, just a one count. But then Kenny Omega just gets punched in the face for his trouble. Must have said something to Rick that... Rick didn't appreciate. Now goes to the top or this second rope and he missed. And now AJ Styles is going to take advantage of that miscue. Oh, nice counter with a reverse DDT. Oh, look. He's going to go for it again. Another super power bomb. But then sent into the corner again. Nice uh, fireman's carry drop. Oh, nice... Uh, uh, Death Valley Slam, I guess you could say. But a very good counter by Styles. I mean, both men are just countering each other. Back and forth. And then a Russian leg sweep. And AJ Styles doing the smart thing and tagging out to the Alpha, Chris Jericho. And now goes right after Rick. I mean, they had a chance to eliminate AJ Styles and they didn't get it done. And oh, Rick was going to go for the uh, retro cutter. But a code breaker instead. 
And that could end it. And Jericho going to drag him away from the opposing side right to his corner. One, two, no. Probably took a little too much time going for the pin. Then an arm breaker. Oh, and a, a cheap shot from uh, Kenny Omega. Then a DDT on a Rick. And Rick is in a whole lot of trouble, and he's going to need some help. And Jericho, powerbomb. Oh, very nice counter, though. Well, I mean, you have the team of JT Price, uh, Rick, who is in the ring, Adam Guerin, the man in green, and Omar Wolf, the guy with the mohawk. So you have the champions and the challengers, and the challengers include uh, Jericho, Balor, Styles, and Omega. But yeah, anything can happen. But, but now sent into the ropes. All back body drop sending Rick onto the outside. And Jericho going to follow him out. And, well, a break up there by JT, but I think he might have done a little more harm than good. Buddy gets a hold of Chris Jericho. And, oh, well, that was a bit of an accident on the part of Rick. He was trying to hit Chris Jericho, but he also hit uh, JT by accident, though. And then a backbreaker. But then Jericho gets sent back and... Oh, and a quick tag right to Balor. But Rick was ready for him. And Rick, for a moment, was about to tag out, but uh, Balor made sure that didn't happen there. Oh, okay, Rick. Like I said, I, th I, th I thought that was an accident. That was an accident. Nice counter by Balor, though. I mean, given that this was Balor's, uh, this is Balor's second match. I mean, after that double countout with Chris Clark. Nice uh, scoop slam. But every time Rick tries to get out, I mean, Finn Balor just manages to hold on to him. Of course, when back when he was the leader of uh, the Bullet Club, was Finn Balor. At the time, he was known as Prince Devitt. Or Divot, I, I think it's called. I, forgive me if I mispronounce his name. But that's what he was known as at the time. Powerbomb onto Rick. Oh, wow. Just, just taking out the knees of... Uh, of Rick. I mean, right now, you know, Finn and, and the rest of the challengers are slowly but surely taking down the cha champions. I almost said challengers, but I meant to say champions. Sorry. I mean, Balor just making sure to cut the ring in half. And now goes up to the top rope. Uh oh, he could be going for. The coup de gras. The coup de gras on to Rick. This could do it. One. Nope. Broken up by Adam Garen. I mean, that could have been it had it not been for Adam. Now goes up to the top rope again. And is, it, is he going to hit it again? He does. Another coup de gras. One. Two. Three. And out goes Rick. It took two 
coup de grace to take out Rick. And now the champions are in trouble. And if the champions have any chance, they got to get rid of Balor or whoever they can to retain. And Omar Wolf in there for the first time. A German suplex. Oh, and a huge clothesline. So right now the champions are in trouble. Oh, nice back kick onto Omar Wolf. And Rick has been eliminated, so of course they can still win this, but they got to Oh, nice double shoulder tackle. And now Omega gonna blatantly choke Omar Wolf out. There you see Rick. But he's going to have to go back to the locker room. Ooh, nice punch right to Omega. And a clothesline on to Omega on the outside. And he's going to go after him. And now, wait, what's, what's uh, Omar doing? Oh, and a spinning neckbreaker right on the floor. Oh, a, a drop kick that takes down Omar Wolf. But a back body drop onto Omega. But from behind, Balor. And now Wolf has to fight both Balor and Omega on the outside. Reverse DDT. But Omar gets sent in the ring, probably the safest place he can be at this point. Oh, then a backbreaker, though. And now Omar Wolf going to try to set up uh, Kenny Omega for something, but Omega was ready for it. Instead, he's going to go for the one-winged angel. One-winged angel. One, two, no, kick out by Omar Wolf. But he almost had him there. Had he got that one, that would have been a, a four to two lead for the challengers. Oh, nice sent on, although I don't know who got the worst of that one. I think uh, Omega did. A quick tag on to Garen. Clothesline. Another one. And another one. And of course, uh, Garen would love nothing more than to get a little bit of revenge against Omega for being eliminated by him the last time that those two were in the match together. A gut wrench slam. One, two, and he got him. So now it's three on three. Of course, without their captain, that is. So I'd have to think that Chris Jericho will assume the captaincy from this point on. And JT Price, the captain for this match, is still there. So big elimination by Adam Guerin. Then a back suplex onto Jericho. And then a German suplex. And then a regular suplex. So it's three on three at this point. And a deadlift powerbomb onto Jericho. And wait, for a moment I thought he was going to go for a pin, but instead going for an R bar on Jericho. But Jericho, nope, got out of it though. Well, there goes Omega. It's 
series of elbows. Oh, nice lion tamer, though. Let me look at the challenger. Just reading, uh, just reading my uh, uh, Discord there, but nothing else happened there. Now attack right to uh, Finn Balor. Forgive me for not saying very much. And a nice reversal onto Finn Balor. And I guess no one wanted to. Uh, uh, tag in all right cool cool well so far right now it's three on three I mean Rick was the first eliminated from his team the champions and then Omega got eliminated uh, by Adam Guerin the man in green and a quick tag to broken JT let's see what he does clothesline a forearm and another one Oh, a punch right to uh, onto Price, but then a curtain call onto Price and a pinfall on him. One. Wow. Kick out. Not uh, not even a one count there. And escaped it, JT Price. And then a rake in the eyes. An attack right to uh, AJ Styles. Ooh, drop kick. Oh, missed that second one though, and then gets kicked in the back by Price. Then a jawbreaker to Price. Ducks one. Ducks a clothesline that does Price. Excuse me. Then a massive suplex onto AJ Styles. And then, uh oh, wait a minute. The price tag. The price tag. That's what he calls that uh, neck breaker move that he just did. The price tag. One, two, three. And that took out AJ Styles. And AJ Styles got eliminated by JT Price. He tags out to Omar Wolf with uh, Finn Balor as the next legal participant. And Balor got busted open. How did he get busted open? I didn't see what happened there. But now it is. Three on two in favor of the champions now. With Omar Wolf, the man in the uh, Mohawk, in the ring with Balor. And like a shark, or in this case a wolf that smells blood, he's going to go for the kill. Nope, couldn't hold him there. Then a German suplex to the wolf. Y you like Finn? Yeah, I, I, I really like Finn. It's just I hate the way that WWE makes this character look stupid. I don't know why. And ooh, went for the coup de grace, but missed. Well, actually, he didn't miss. It was just he got out of the way. Now attack to Chris Jericho. Oh, and a forearm. And an elbow backbreaker. Oh, that'll definitely break the wolf in half. And, well, nice rollover by Chris Jericho. Oh. I know, like, the guys that I love are, like, Finn Balor, at one time Dolph Ziggler, uh, Daniel Bryan, although Daniel managed to succeed nonetheless.
And now what I know it's it's stupid. I hate that. Oh, nice lighting drop kick onto Chris Jericho. One, two, three, and out goes Chris Jericho. And all that's left is Finn Balor. You're still here, Russ watching. Well, so far, your team is doing pretty well after that rough start, losing Rick uh, at the start of the match. But then, since then, you have eliminated three men straight, and all that's left is a bloodied Finn Balor. So now Finn Balor is at the mercy of the champions. And a tag right to JT Price himself, who's still in the chat, of course. Exactly. That's 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 the one thing I always wonder why WWE just doesn't listen. Exactly, they are. I mean, the only thing good about WWE are their video games. That's sad if you really think of it that way. But now Finn, what's he doing? Oh, that drop kick sent back first into that turnbuckle. I mean, Finn, he's just running on adrenaline at this point. Although, why is he just standing there? I, I, guess he get, he, I guess he must have thought better of it. Yeah, like Cody Rhodes and uh, who else? I, I mean, Cody Rhodes is pretty much the number one example I can think of. And Omar Wolf making sure that uh, Finn and doesn't uh, do anything. Although Finn just landed on JT Price, but the referee's not counting him. Guess maybe his whole body isn't on the top of him. I don't know why. But yeah, Cody Rhodes, that's the number one guy. Adam Rose? Adam Rose? I mean, I guess he does much better outside of the company and, and Neville back when he was known as Pac and then a code breaker on to JT Price and Finn is just running on adrenaline here the former Prince Devitt now going up to the top rope again uh oh Oh, the, the coup de grace, this time on to JT Price. One, two, nope, saved by Omar Wolf. But he's doing the smart thing by staying in on top of uh, JT Price. Reverse DDT. Oh, yeah, EC3 when, you know, you know, when he first left the WWE and then when he came back, he just, I mean, he, he's killing it in NXT, but I'm, I'm afraid that every time someone gets promoted up to the main roster, more often than not, they just look stupid from when they were in NXT. But now Finn, of course, was ready for the Wolf as uh, JT tagged out to the Wolf. Nice forearm shot. I mean, if Finn can manage to do the impossible, it would just be an upset for the ages, really. Oh, yeah, Drew McIntyre. He got better when he first left the WWE. Although part of it had to do with him going on a diet, you know. I noticed that he mentioned that he was on a diet, you know, and he focused on taking better care of his uh, body, and it made a huge difference for him in the long run, in addition to being booked better. 
And now all three of the remaining champions just putting the hurt on Finn Balor. I mean, Finn has taken so much punishment, it's not even funny. They have to change his theme. Oh yeah, that's right. He used to have uh, broken dreams. Broken dreams, that's what he called that first theme that he used to have. But then sent right back in the ring. But then Omar Wolf, what's he doing? Another spitty neck breaker. Broken dreams, that's right. Yeah. I, I loved that theme. It was awesome. And then on oh, a DDT onto Omar Wolf. Oh, then an elbow right to Finn Balor. But Finn Balor is back in the ring, though. Omar Wolf is on the outside, though. Yeah, I, I loved it, too, for what it was. Of course, Finn does not have anybody to tag to. But Omar Wolf does. Goes off the ropes. Oh, then a drop kick to the side of the head. And Balor going to go up to the top again. I'll tell you one thing. Finn is making a great accounting of himself. Whether he wins this or not, it remains to be seen. Coup de gras. This time on to Omar Wolf. And he's far away from the champion's corner. One, two. No. Wade Barrett? Oh, yeah, that's right. Wade Barrett or Stu Bennett, as he is known on the independent scene. Those are just three wastes of talents that, again, it just goes to show they don't know how to make stars anymore. And some of the guys that they used to have could have just as easily been new stars. But what happened? They just, they ruined them. And wait, one, two. But Finn continues to kick out. What is it going to take to beat Finn? They, and they could have done so much more, I know. Although, uh-oh. I, I, I think this might do it. Gonna go for the, the jackhammer. And a pin. One, two, three. No! Finn, what the hell does it take to beat Balor? I mean, I guess that might be his new name right now, but Finn... I'll tell you one thing, Ryan, Finn is making himself a bigger star in this game than he is in real life. That just, that's sad. Yeah, exactly. And that's also sad when, when Total Nonstop Action Wrestling is making better star. Better yet, when Lucha Underground and New Japan Ring of Honor are making better stars than WWE, you, you know something is really wrong right there. Or how about this? When reali Reality of Wrestling, which is uh, an independent promotion that Booker T is in charge of in Houston, uh, in the Texas area, when they're making better stars than the WWE, yeah, then there's really something wrong right there. Now going for a head scissors, I guess he wants to try to get Balor to tap out, but Balor, Balor is just staying in this. I don't know how he's doing this. A back suplex, then, a, then an elbow drop. But, but, uh, but Ryan, let's get back to uh, Finn in the ring right here. The fact that he's still in this match is a testament to the fact that, you know, it just goes to show that Finn is a star in the making, and yet WWE can't see that. But now going for a pump handle, a pump handle fallaway slam. But Finn is just not giving up. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. If it goes to the time limit, 
I'll be I'll be shocked. And this is just CPU. I know it is. Close line. <laughs> An attack to the lone wolf, Omar Wolf. Oh, and a, a drop kick onto Adam. Yeah, that's that just goes to show a damn computer can do better than real people. I know. A, a, a neck snap and a soccer ball kick to the back of Finn Balor. And JT Price just posing, showing off his physique. I'll tell you one thing. I'm surprised. I'm I'm, I'm surprised uh, a lot of the women haven't gone after him. If you know what I mean. <laughs> nah, I just kid. I kid. But JT is just astound. He has to wonder what do I have to do. But now it looks like he may go for the kill. The camel clutch. And finally, Finn Balor taps out. It took a camel clutch from JT Price to finally put him away. But give it up to Finn Balor. His performance will not go unnoticed, I'm telling you right now. But the champions, but the winners, I should say, and still the champions, after all is said and done, are JT Price, Retro Rick, Adam Guerin, and Omar Wolf. So they are still the Q4 champions. So big win for JT Price. In fact, he eliminated two men from this match. So congratulations to JT Price. They are still the champions. Yes, GG indeed. Wow, what could I say? But I think this is the end of the show. Until next time, this is Taju22 signing off, saying goodbye, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Yeah, it was a hard win, but like I said, until next time, take care of each other, stay safe, and be yourself. So I'll see you later. And thank you for watching. Peace.